I think it Ochovi, was. Oh, Chovy. Oh, Chovy. You came and you betrayed me again now. And I'll still love you in LCK now. Fucking hell. This guy, every. You know, the book I love is this. The, here's the angle you might not have noticed, Monty, is Tom got broken twice and then immediately got ruined by the universe for being broken. So, as we mentioned on the last episode, you remember we said that the most interesting thing about the bracket, Monty, was I had JDG winning, you had Genji, and Dom, believe it or not, Dom had T1. Dom, the yep. ultimate. He to a T1 down right <laughs> as soon as he picked T1 they lost to JDG and BLG and he was done right but the best part is he did it again to himself Monty because he also then said that Chorby's the best player in the world he broke finally and then Chorby <laughs> should have been against BLG <laughs> I well, I don't know it. how much of I can't it was trophy. I can't. I, I don't. But I, I don't know how much. It's a bit like the world's one, Monty. Yeah, he wasn't shit, but he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be the best player in the world, like Dom said. He's supposed <laughs> to style on people at your gal, mate. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, the 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 Genji thing was obviously very disappointing to me because it it felt like another. Well, I mean, it's not that they played a particularly great series against T1. To be fair, I just thought that they would bounce back like they did in the lower bracket in the LCK because they showed very rapid adaptation in in the LCK playoffs that we really didn't see here. Uh, and we didn't get any of the big Doran performances that pushed them over the top in the finals. He uh, Another we, classic that, we that was a, uh, Well, we have to admit that that was an overperformance in the finals. By the way, I don't like... I don't know where these narratives come from on the broadcast, but people talking about the casters talking about his like legendary Gragas. Oh, smart, isn't it? Yes, he had good Gragas games in the finals. Did you watch the season? Do you know his champion pool? Because it's not that Doran really has been a massive Gragas player this year. Outside, outside of the finals, let me just look. I think he had two games on it in the spring split. Regular they, just, they just did it because if you go to League Pedia and put yeah, overall, games. it's one of his best win rates. But as you said, that's from years ago. Yeah, it, it, he has 21 games on it in total. And yes, he has a 76% win rate, but it's not like it's in his top five champions. And because he's been on good teams for a variety of years. Even last year, he career. played it like six times, Monty. Like, it's, it's just from years <laughs> ago they're going off. They're actually going off some old meme shit. Yeah, but it, you know, when, when they're like trying to pump up his Gragas, all you have to say is, this is what I don't understand about, if you don't know, here's the thing, if you don't know that his, that he hasn't been playing a lot of Gragas this year, outside of the finals, where he did have an extraordinary performance, as a caster, here's all you have to say. He had a great performance on Gragas in the finals. Maybe he's going to continue that. You don't have to, like, pump him up as a legendary Gragas player. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. So, and it, as for win rates, when you are on a team that constantly wins, as Doran has been for the majority of his career, you're going to have good win rates. His win rate as a professional player is over 60%. His win rate on his number one play champion, Nar, is 68%. He's a Nar player. Like, that's who he is, guys. And Jace is his number two. Like, he actually has played a lot of uh, carries in the top lane. As well, like we can talk about his Akali or his Camille, which he's played less than his Gragas, but that has been more recently relevant in the scope of his career, especially last year. So uh, I just, I don't know where some of this stuff comes from, but there's just different ways to phrase it on the broadcast if you are not sure about a player's career or their legacy. You know? So anyway, <laughs> this is all to say that... When we look at when we look at Gen G and their disappointments within this bracket stage, especially versus Billy Billy, I mean, I I like the fact that they they switched it up to playing Annie um, because Annie was well first off very frequently banned um, when it came time for LCK Spring. We we saw Chovy. Let me see here. He played two games on Annie in the regular season. And zero games in the playoffs. So this isn't a pick that we've really identified as being a Chovy pick. But it functions like a Chovy pick in that it gets a lot of mid lane priority and allows him to roam. You kind of dump Tibbers into the mid lane on cooldown. And you're able to really effectively play around objectives. What was weird about this series was not the Annie. Well, it was his teleport in game number three that was just completely egregious at the end of the game. But... 
I mean, I woke up. All right, here's the, here's the, here's the story. I woke up because you know the game started at four a.m. my time, so I wake up and it's like six thirty or seven, and I pull out my phone and I open my phone to the live game and it's game three, and I see them down o two and Peanut playing Kindred, and my first thought is this is fucking over. <laughs> how did we get? How did we get to this point where Peanut spends this tournament playing Nidalee and Kindred, which may have been his identity four years ago, five years ago, but it's certainly not his identity now. The other thing that killed me was this, and if you're a lifelong Chauvy fan, you know what I'm talking about now. Another thing Chauvy does, and there was the famous season nine Griffin one, is when he is like the best player in the world, he will do like what Caps does now and just play the support of champion, right? That works if you have like... The reason T1 does it is because, one, Faker just isn't that carry player. And then, two, Zeus and Gumiushi are supposed to carry on their picks. In this team, Monty, I can't have fucking, like, Maokai top lane on Doran, which means then we've got Annie mid. Right, spoiler, now it's all on Piers, the rookie. And what's the one thing BLG has for them? They have, like, fluky top lane who just feasts on famine, Bin. And then they have all in on Elk. Like, the Elk is being treated like the next fucking Uzi eye. Like, every game is raised. The puppy. Every team fight is everyone jump onto elk like the joke is like in that scenario pierce is a rookie still guys like yeah he's actually not this uh, there's very few rookies can actually hold up under international pressure like this and be the best so to me it's an example of where you've drafted like korean style like you did the correct draft but not for your personnel like i'm not putting all my eggs in the pierce basket on that one you know also he's on the Felios. it's not exactly like the easiest champion in the world to fucking 1v9 a game if you're behind from me like there's a lot of fucking remember the thing people never understand about the Felios thing is you it's like one of those champions a bit like, nah, you don't choose when it's powerful. You don't choose when you have that gun. Like you're trying to empty the guns and get to the ones you want at the right time. But then if it's not, you're on the wrong set of guns that like you can't do the it's People, there are too many noobs have just seen the fucking ult and f four years ago, idiot riot, like haha, <laughs> 200 years. Like they think it's just you press a button. It's not bloody, it's not fucking Annie or Syndra or something, you know, like there's so much complexity. So the problem with that one is, it's also the fact they got three zeroed, mate. At least it was competitive. I'd be in there, but you just get clapped three zero by a team that like BLG wasn't even supposed to be at MSI. They weren't even supposed well, to be here. I I also think that one of the one of the meta developments that we saw by the time we got to the finals was that Jinx just has to be banned, um, especially in the hands of some of these players. But Jinx's ability to clean up these team fights and get passive resets was actually a huge part of why these teams did so well. So, for example, in game number two uh, between Gen G and, and Billy Billy, this is a very winnable game for Gen G. And what was a common thread between Gen G and T1 when they were playing against BLG was that. First off, I mean, this is just worse team fighting. There's not really another way to put it, is that they would over engage and then they would get kited by a jinx. The jinx would kill one of them and then reset all over their entire team. Like, so what happens in Genji versus BLG is that Peanut is he is standing on a ward in a brush on the left side of mid lane and he W's over the wall. So they know he doesn't actually have W at that point in time, the clone, the Wukong clone. And then he E's to engage, but Elk has summoners up. And so Elk just kites him because he knows he's coming and that he's out of movement abilities. And Peanut dies, gives the reset over, and then BLG ends the game off of that team fight. But this was a pretty advantageous position in the game for Gen G, but they they played it badly and they, they played badly around vision. They played badly around the engage. And P and the Jinx is just supremely powerful. And that's why by the time we get to the finals, the one game where Jinx gets through, Jinx wins the game for for BLG. Otherwise, it's just kind of banned. BLG spends most of the spends the entire time banning it outside of that. Um, because it's such a supremely powerful pick. And as you say about Aphelios, you have to have the right conditions for Aphelios to be good. And he doesn't have that same kind of like janitor quality of cleaning up fights like a jinx or a zeri does and zeri is i would say more limited at this point in time uh due to the nerfs that have happened still obviously quite strong as as kind of a secondary pick but that's why we are seeing this kind of rise of of jinx in terms of you know the the where where she was at this tournament right um 
I'm going to take and, also on Genji's style I want to get your thoughts on. Like, it goes like this, because I th it was the same reason why I was so sure if T1 made it to the final, they wouldn't be able to beat JDG again. It's because here's the problem. T1 has that really interesting style where they can choose when not to fight, when to engage, and when to move around the map or take a fight over here. Genji is the one that can use the waves against you and can choose, again, like, you you want to go for this? We're just going to take the waves and we're going to take a tower, right? Those That's all great in LCK where teams play honorably and they do what you're supposed to do. Yes, I after you, sir. Oh, thank you very much. No, no, after you. Yeah. Oh, and I've uh, to you, sir. So, oh, a good top of the morning to you, sir. Like, that's great. But what you found here was it's like, it's like when they were trying to tell me when I did a big brains episode, they were telling me, yeah, but the thing is, like, T1 will basically get like JDG in scenarios where they shouldn't fight and they'll fight. And it's like, you don't know these teams, bro. If you know, JDG is the best at team fighting, but BLG, all they have is team fighting. So what you need yes. to know is this. When you ask Gen G or something, go, well, like, well, I guess you could team fight us now, but why would you? It would be silly. You're behind. This isn't a lot. They're like, do you feel in control right now? Like, their whole world is doing those fights from 4060. Their whole shit is literally like, right, let's yeah. literally all and the eggs in the elk it. basket and let's just go. Let's just go. And then obviously, that's where actually the bin guy, I'm just going to say it now, you're all going to get so hurt in your feelings. Bin is overrated. Because he really is like some PDD motherfucker where he either carries the fuck out the game or just shits the bed in lane and feeds over and over and over again. Now, here's why that's brilliant in this team, though. Because in this team, when you're all just looking at Elk like this, the fucking Jax is just on your head and then the fucking guy's coming <laughs> in the casino. Like, that, it, like, the distraction element works in this team. So I feel like for Gen G and T1, dude, they really... I bet they went into it thinking there's no way the series plays out like this. And as you're saying, they didn't even have to take some of these fights. But I'll tell you what, the LPL is amazing that. It's like that because Koreans play like percentage based League of Legends. They play like poker players who are trying to win in the long run. They're being offered like, well, wouldn't you listen? I know you're not a team that normally takes a team fight in this scenario, but would you care for a 60 40 team fight in your favor? And then they're like, well, got, well, we have to take that. And then the joke <laughs> is like, they that's what the fucking BLG wants. They don't give a fuck, <laughs> they want to get dirty and fight. They want chaos. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 also it's also that both Gen G and T1 didn't play like Genji or T1 oh, in their all. last couple of series. Like Genji was literally taking dragon fights where they were behind on objective power spikes that they didn't need to take. Sometimes they had already taken an earlier dragon to get like against BLG. And then it would be BLG's first dragon. They're behind. Like Elk has already hit a power spike on his item. Pays hasn't. And a normal Genji game, they would cross map. In these games, they get sucked into the fights for I have no idea what reason. Like there must be, I, I, there, there isn't an explanation behind this. Besides, Gen G and T one have nerves issues on certain players, and for Gen G, it happened at Worlds last year where they didn't play like they they should, um, and it happened again at MSI this year. Weirdly, it doesn't seem to happen in LCK playoffs. They play like they should in LCK playoffs, and they seem very prepared. On the other side, T one, if there's any kind of stakes. They they have crumbled. They have just crumbled. Um, you know, basically, at, you know, we saw them crumble at Worlds. We saw them crumble here. They, you would have thought, by the way, that the best team in the world at diving bot lane would maybe <laughs> would maybe play around bot lane, especially when they know that the biggest win condition is Elk, and you have Zayas in the top side. Instead. They basically allowed BLG to repeatedly dive them bot lane and set up unfavorable matchups for themselves and tried to prioritize top. But the thing is, is that when T1 got top ahead, like they got Kennen massively ahead in game number two of the of that series versus BLG. And did they like it feels like Zayas cannot convert those leads no. in big games. He's too underwhelming you know, when it's the big match, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, so you spend all this time getting him ahead and like kind of stuffing the scion thing. And then he just runs it down under a tower and gives up a solo kill to Ben and they lose the advantage that they have. He doesn't set up big flanks on the cannon. He's not effective at all. He takes a massive lead and ends the game. Oh, four and two doing virtually nothing on this cannon. And I think it's just so difficult um, you know, it, to to deal with T1 in these situations because the other person who hasn't been showing up for a lot of the big games is Faker. Like, I understand why, you know, you look at the, the team composition and we saw this play out between um, JDG and BLG in the finals, which is 
the Jace versus Silas composition. So the Silas, we saw this starting at Worlds last year. The Maokai is the Maokai is taken first. Then you take Silas in the mid lanes. You get the better version of the Maokai ult. But there's a punish there, which is that you have to play against Jason Lane. Jace is very good into Silas and Lane. Faker dies in that lane. Like compare that to the the Silas versus Jace matchup we saw between Yagao and Knight, where Knight just slams Yagao on the Silas. And that's the price that you expect to pay when you are taking the Maokai ult. You say, okay, so which is why they don't ban the Silas in the second rotation of your T1. You're feeling very good about your team composition, right? Um, you have massive AoE. You have a huge front line. You've got some good poke damage. But they squander all of their advantages, and that's it. You, you just don't win in the late game in that scenario. So it was really, it was really sad because it wasn't necessarily part of it was that the Korean teams, I think, had bad ideas a lot of the time, like in the, you know, when, when we're, when we're looking at some of the, the like J or T1 Kindred games, sometimes their team compositions don't make sense. Owner plays Kindred and they're playing Kindred into like Gragas. Like that's really hard to do because you're going to get knocked out of the ultimate. Um, it, it, it's tough to be in those kind of situations and make it work. Um, I even thought if you looked, like it's like you were saying before, the Koreans had a totally different read on the meta, Monty. Like the joke is they all gave BLG the fucking one million Jinx and Zeris. And BLG clearly wanted those. They actually like those picks. <laughs> Meanwhile, all the Koreans opted into like, we just want the Zaya and the Aphelios. Can we please have Zaya and Aphelios? No, like that didn't work for you. That did not, you are, also you don't have ruler, mate. Like none of your teams have ruler. There's another thing right now. First of all, on the faker thing, here's the way you have to phrase it. Because I said this before, it hasn't popped through people's heads yet. This is how you know, Monty. People really do actually not give a fuck whether you import players. Because you know, we always used to get triggered that they'd say like, IG proved that the LP yells better than the LCK. It's like, by taking two of the greatest players you could ever get from Korea and stomping everyone. What? But they do. In their brain, they treat you like you're Chinese. People, I, the penny still hasn't dropped for people. The best player in the world and the MVP of this tournament outside of ADC is a Chinese mid laner. A Chinese mid laner, guys. He's better than Trophy. He is better than Faker. He's better than Lucky. In fact, look at this tournament. Not only is that insane, I don't think the world's best mid laner has ever been more gapping a Faker ever. But think of the level, like you said, of the champions. Think about his Annie versus Faker's Annie. His Ari versus Faker's Ari. His fucking Jace versus Faker's Jace. It's night and day. I mean, that's a fucking pun, but it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's actually ridiculous. The gap is, the joke is, we're talking about Western gap. The gap in mid lane for T1 and night is absolutely bonkers. You saw when your gal got to the final, if you thought, oh, he's having a good tournament. Fucking Knight just dusted him off, mate. Like, yeah, cheers, mate. I'll take that. I'll beat you on the other side of it, too. Get the fuck out. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.